Good morning. God is good. All the time. Amen. My name is Michael Newhart, and I am transitional minister here at First Baptist Church of East Greenwich, Rhode Island. And I'm pleased to see all of you here, here in the sanctuary, and also those of you who are joining us from your home. We are pleased that you have joined us here uh, by live stream or via <laughs> live in the church. We have, uh, today is World Communion Sunday, so people all over the world are celebrating communion at, uh, on this day, the first Sunday of October. Just a couple of, of announcements. Available on the table outside are envelopes that say Ian on them. And that is uh, concerning Hurricane Ian, which has struck uh, Florida and the Caribbean and uh, many parts of, uh, of this part of the world. And so uh, funds that are contributed will go to uh, American Baptists who will use those funds for hurricane relief. Uh, are there are there people who would like to have these envelopes that could be uh, they could be passed? You would raise your hand. Okay, There's one down here and one over there. Here and then one down here. I see that hand. See those hands? All those are being uh, uh, distributed. Uh, one uh, one addition that I would like to add on the bulletin is that after the hymn number three forty seven, usually we have the invocation and Gloria a tree. We will be doing those uh, as as normal. Um, at this time, there is uh, uh, an announcement from the floor, so please share that. Good morning, everybody. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Kathy Yorston. I'm uh, one of the chairs of the rummage sale, and the reason I'm up here today is to give you the big bag for help for the rummage sale. Um, you can start to drop your things off next Sunday on through Thursday only. We're going to be open this year from 2 to 7 on Friday and 8 to 11 on Saturday. In your bulletin today, everybody has a flyer. Tells you everything you need to know. A good reminder for everybody. And there is a sign-up sheet at the back um, in front of the great room. So before you leave today, give it some thought. If you can help, I much, much appreciate that. And um, yeah, we need trucks. We need everything we always need. We haven't done this now for, this will be our third rummage that we haven't done. So we're back in business, first time. I'm suspecting it will be busy. Um, those of you who have been, you know how busy the fall rummage gets and uh, this will be no exception since we're all jonesing for it. So anyway, uh, please come out and help. Uh, we desperately need your help. If we don't help your help, we can't do this because it takes, um, it takes our village to do this. So thank you in advance for everything that you can do. If you can spare any time, setup is a big deal, breakdown is a big deal, and trucks are huge. So thank you very much in advance and uh, I hope to see you all. Thank you. Now let us center ourselves for worship as found in place the prelude.
Our call to worship comes from Psalm 37. <clears throat> Trust in the Lord and do good. You will live in the land and enjoy security. Take the life of the Lord and you will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will make your vindication God and your life. And trust us before us. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Let us stand and sing hymn number 347. Tell his praise in song and story. this morning to praise you, to worship you, to hear your word proclaimed, and to respond to your call to discipleship. Form us, inform us, reform us, transform us into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. In whose name we pray. Amen.
seated. Yeah, please be seated. Please be seated. Please be seated. gifts that you give to us we we give a portion of these gifts to you bless them use them for your service in Jesus name we pray
Now with the children, please come forward for the children's time. Ah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, okay. Well, the uh, um, the uh, whoop. Wait, you wait up for that. I might have to. I might have to go to them. Okay. The uh, uh, the. <laughs> yeah, push, push someone forward. You want to come? Come on. Okay. Thank you. Okay, will you, will you sit? There you go. We got one more. Okay, okay. You want to come on and sit? You want to sit here? Good, good. Well, my name is Pastor Mike. Tell me your name. Clara? Coral. Coral. Okay. Your name? Liberty. Liberty? Oh, well, I, I originally from Liberty, Missouri. So uh, that, that's good. And your name? Amelia. Well, I'm, glad to, I'm glad to see you all today. Now, I, have, I want to show you uh, something on my computer. Now, uh, let's see. I'm trying to... I need like three hands here. Did someone hold this microphone for me? Okay, Liberty. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to um, show you something here on my computer, and also it's up. It's up there, so they can they can see too. But here we've got four books right on the you know on top of each other, and these are the four. Gospels, the four stories about Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the four Gospels that we have in our Bible. So, uh, oh, there we go. Okay. And one of these Gospels named Luke we're talking about I hear I'm, I'm reading them in worship and you're studying them in uh, in Sunday school and this is a story about another story about Jesus written by uh, someone named Luke whoops we went backwards okay and so one time there's Jesus. This is a picture of what uh, some people thought Jesus looked like. One time Jesus was with his disciples. Here you can see the disciples right there. There's Jesus. And um, the disciples said to Jesus, increase our faith. There we go. Increase our faith. In other words, we believe in you, but make it, make it so that we believe even more. You can see a tree there. And Jesus said something really interesting. And he said, if you have faith like a mustard seed, he talked about this little seed, which is really very small. Do you see how big these fingers look? So a, a mustard seed is just that small. He said, if you have a faith like a mustard seed, you can say to this, you can say to this mulberry tree, to this mulberry tree, to get up, and be thrown into the sea, which is really very interesting to have a, a mulberry tree to be taken up and just planted into the sea. But Jesus also talked about forgiveness. Now, sometimes people do something 
wrong to us and they say I'm sorry and we say something like that's okay or I forgive you or we do something wrong to someone and, and have to say I'm sorry and so the person says I forgive you sometimes that's tough because maybe people hurt our, hurt our feelings badly but we, uh, Jesus teaches us to to forgive it may be it may be difficult and, and maybe we can't forgive right away but eventually hopefully we can forgive and I like this picture this is the last picture and I like it because it's of you know some kind of bird not sure exactly what kind of bird it is but it's being let go and when somebody does something against us oftentimes we have some hurt feelings we have we're, we're, we're mad or we're we're sad or whatever but eventually when we are able to forgive a person it's kind of like letting letting it go letting that bird go letting our feelings go to God so Jesus taught us about the importance of forgiveness Thank you all for being with me during this time and look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Bye-bye. We come now to our time of prayer, which we begin with uh, concerns and celebrations for celebrations and concerns. We're, um, we certainly want to continue to be with the victims of uh, Hurricane Ian. What concerns uh, do, you, do you have? It looks like Randy's gonna begin. Yes, um, we received news this morning that uh, Reverend John Holker passed away. Um, he preached at this church quite a few times this summer. A longtime friend of the church, the Warwick Central Baptist Church, our church and Warwick Central done a lot of ministries together. So please keep uh, jo uh, his family in your prayers. There's a little right at the bottom from his wife on our Facebook page, and if we get information on calling hours or a funeral or whatever else, we'll pass it on to everybody. But it's, Reverend John Holder. Uh, what other concerns uh, are there? We begin over here. Are there other concerns or celebrations? And here in this particular section.
Just for continued prayers for Ukraine as they enter a, a scary situation. Yes, with the annexation, declared annexation of parts of Ukraine. Then let us have a uh, moment of silence in which we lift up our uh, our celebrations and our concerns, and then uh, following that, uh, then Don will uh, play the organ and we will sing, Lord, listen to your children praying. So let's have some silence. these concerns that have been articulated. We thank you for the life of John Booker. We pray that he will be with his family as they mourn and as they celebrate his life. Thank you for the service which he provided here. We pray for the victims of Hurricane Ian, and we pray that you will protect others who are in its wake. We particularly pray for Doc and Mary White, and pray that they might be <coughs> safe. We pray for those affected by the Ukrainian war, we pray for those in Ukraine. We pray for those in Russia. We pray that somehow those, those who have a spirit of peace, of understanding, of reconciliation, might somehow gain the upper hand in Russia and that there might be no more war. There might be we pray for this church in its transition. We pray that you may guide us in 
exploring this church's mission. We pray that we might listen to you very closely as you make known your will for this church. Thank you for the leaders of this church. Thank you for the members. We pray that as we gather together that we will draw closer to you, closer to doing justice, loving mercy, and reaching out in love. We pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Let us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. We not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
city. Our Old Testament scripture comes from Lamentations 3. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Praise is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul of the saints. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Our New Testament lesson is found on page 852 in your pew Bibles. That is Luke 17, 5 through 10. Listen for God's word. Luke 17, 5 to 10. The apostle said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, Come, here at once and take your place at the table. Would you not rather say to him, prepare a supper for me, supper for me. Put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink. Later you may eat and drink. Do you think, do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. May God add blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of God's word. Let us have a moment of silence in which we prepare ourselves for the proclamation of the word. of our hearts be acceptable in your sight O Lord our strength and our redeemer Amen There are, of course, four Gospels, as we talked about in the children's talk. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And our focus in this liturgical year is Luke. The liturgical year is set up on a three-year cycle. And one of the first three Gospels is featured each year. We are currently, and each, each year is given a uh, letter. And so this is year C. And during Advent, we will change to year A. And the focus will be on Matthew. But this year, we're focusing on Luke. Lucky Luke, as I sometimes say. One thing that is distinctive about Luke is that in this gospel, the third gospel, Jesus takes a long journey to get to Jerusalem. Jesus sets his face toward Jerusalem in chapter 9, but he doesn't get there until chapter 19. Maybe he was traveling on I-95. Had lots of construction and, and all kinds of uh, things. Now Luke is 24 chapters long. But for nearly half of it, for 10 chapters, 
He is on his way to Jerusalem, where he will die, rise again, and ascend. Now, in comparison, in Mark, Jesus only takes one chapter to get to Galilee, or excuse me, to get from Galilee to Jerusalem. But in Luke, it's 10. In much of the gospel, then, Jesus is on a journey toward Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the place where Jesus will die, rise again, and ascend. And so here in these 10 chapters, while Jesus is on a journey, the disciples are also on the journey with him. Jesus is preparing the disciples for his exodus through death, resurrection, and ascension. In our scripture lesson for today, in chapter 17 of Luke, Jesus is coming to the end of his journey. To the Pharisees, Jesus has told the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, which we talked about last Sunday. You know, richy rich and lazy Lazarus. Now Jesus speaks to the disciples and he tells them about forgiveness. He says that if another disciple sins, you must rebuke the offender. And if there is repentance, you must forgive. And if the same person sins against you seven times a day and turns back to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive. Sinning seven times a day. Wow, that's a lot of sinning. If you consider that we're awake, for 16 hours a day, that's just a little more than a sin every two hours. And if you've got 12 disciples, well, that's a lot of sinning. Particularly if they're spending most of their time following Jesus around while he's preaching and teaching. I imagine, though, if they followed him, the disciples got into it with one another. Peter and his brother Andrew probably gossiping about James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Oh, did, you, did you hear what, what, what about James? Did you hear that about John? <laughs> and so the sons of Zebedee thundered back. What did you say? But Jesus taught them about repentance and forgiveness. It wasn't the first time. Just a couple of chapters ago, Jesus told the lost and found parables that we talked about a few weeks ago. The parables of the lost sheep and the lost coin. You remember those? Uh, a shepherd had 100 sheep, one goes astray, and the shepherd leaves the 99 and goes out looking for the, the one. And also a woman who's lost one coin of ten sweeps and cleans the house to find that one coin. And each time, Jesus ends with the same refrain. Just so I tell you, there is more joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents than over 99 who need no repentance. Early in, early in Jesus' ministry, Four friends take tiles from a roof and lower the, a paralyzed person down so that Jesus can heal the person. And Jesus sees their faith, their faith, and says to the man, your sins are forgiven. So there's a connection there between faith and forgiveness. Jesus wants the disciples to forgive. And it's not an easy lesson for the disciples or for us. And maybe Peter and Andrew looked at James and John and, and they think, he wants us to forgive them. He's got to be kidding. Jesus wants us to be apostles of forgiveness. It's crazy. Well, 
Luke suddenly calls the disciples apostles. The word disciple means learner, student. But the word apostle means one sent out. And Luke has used that, that word before too. Early in Jesus' ministry, Jesus appoints the twelve. And Luke says that Jesus also called them apostles. After being with Jesus on the road, and after witnessing the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus, the disciples would be sent out to be witnesses from Jerusalem, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Sent out to be apostles. But not quite yet. Because right now they still need a lot more training. Luke calls the disciples apostles, and he calls Jesus the Lord. Again, this is not the first time that Luke has called Jesus Lord. All the way back in the beginning of Luke's gospel, he has Jesus born and the angels proclaimed to the shepherds, to you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Hmm. Well, the name the Lord was the name for God, but it also was the name for a teacher or a slave owner. For the early Christians, Jesus was Lord. That is, he was the master. So the apostles, when they hear this word about forgiveness, say to their master, increase our faith. Do you really want us to forgive? Well, you need to pump up our faith. Pump up our faith, increase our faith, so that we can forgive. And the Lord said, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed. Now that's pretty small faith. Size of a mustard seed. A mustard seed is it's a big seed. It's like you see on the on the slide. It's minuscule. The apostles want big faith, but the Lord is only looking for small faith. Because if you have it, then you can say to a mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea. Now, I really don't know why you want to do that. <laughs> I don't know why you want to do landscaping that way. Now, the big word for that is telekinesis. That is that you're able to move things with only your mind. That is, you say, okay, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that that tree is going to be, you know, it go in the bay, into the sea. So I'm thinking that. And that happens. That's telekinesis. Well, what good is it for a mulberry tree to get planted in the sea? Maybe that would be good in times of drought. It would get lots of water, but otherwise it wouldn't do much good. What was Jesus thinking? I'm going to say something controversial here. So get ready. Oh boy. At times, I think Jesus was silly. I think that sometimes Jesus just messed with people's minds. The reign of God is something completely different than the way that the world thinks. God says in Isaiah, my ways are not your ways, says the Lord. So sometimes Jesus the Lord said silly things, things that don't make a whole lot of sense to show how different God's ways of thinking are different from our ways. I think that's what's going on here. Our faith is not to do our landscaping, our faith is to forgive. 
It's to love. It's to pursue peace and hope and joy and all that good stuff. And you may pray for parking spaces when you go to the grocery store, and that's okay. Whenever I do that, God directs me to the, to the spaces farthest from the entrance. And when, I complain, and when I complain, God says, you need the exercise. Rather than praying for parking spaces, maybe it's better to pray for our attitude, our frame of mind when we go into the store, that we might be the most conscientious shoppers that we can be, buying things that are healthy and cost-effective, and greeting the employees and fellow shoppers with kindness and concern. Remember that Jesus says that we are to love God with all our minds. I think that we need to have the same approach to what Jesus says about slaves in our scripture lesson, which in the, in the latter part of the scripture lesson. He tells the apostles about your slaves. Well, the apostles don't have any slaves. They've given up everything and followed Jesus. And then the Lord says that the apostles are to call themselves worthless slaves. Well, it's probably better to translate that as unhelpful. But they're not unhelpful slaves, and neither are we. Howard Thurman, the 20th century African-American spiritual writer who taught at Howard University School of Divinity, tells of his grandmother who was born into slavery. She, she said that the slave preacher would sneak onto the plantation and hold secret meetings with the slaves. He would say, you, you are not slaves. You, you are not the N-word. You are children of God. In the same way, we are not worthless slaves, but worthy children of God. As children of God, we have faith. Small faith like that of a mustard seed. And with that small faith, we forgive. Forgiveness is often difficult. Oftentimes we immediately cannot forgive, and that's okay. As long as we are working toward reconciliation. Also, I'm going to suggest that we begin not with others, but with ourselves. Oftentimes, the person that we have the most difficulty forgiving is ourselves, the person that we see every day in the mirror. Oh, why did I, why did I do that? Or, oh, I'm, I'm so stupid. Or, or, oh, I can't believe that that. 40 years ago that I did blah, 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 blah. Right, it hasn't made a hill, of, hill of a difference to anybody, but oh, I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it. Though many of us have grown up in church, we really have not taken seriously the message of God's forgiveness. Yet we've been baptized, but the waters of forgiveness have not totally cleansed us. Salvation is an ongoing experience. Theologians call that sanctification. So consider forgiveness, and specifically self-forgiveness. Every Sunday we say, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. We may say a little bit different wording, some saying transgressions, others saying debts, but we do not disagree that the Lord offers forgiveness. So I ask you this week that you consider self-forgiveness. Yesterday, I followed a guided meditation on my phone from the app Insight Timer Meditation app. It was a short meditation of 10 minutes that had me write a letter to myself in which I forgave myself. It was a powerful experience. I realized that I was holding on to a lot of things. Perhaps this is a practice that you'd like to do this week. Take 10 minutes and write a letter to yourself in which you forgive yourself of what you've been holding on to. 
In a few minutes, we will celebrate communion, the Lord's Supper. Luke's Gospel ends with the two on the road to Emmaus, recognizing the risen Jesus in the breaking of the bread. We too recognize him in our breaking of the bread. We recognize him as the one who can increase our faith, as the one who forgives us and encourages us and enables us to forgive ourselves. It is the meal of faith and the meal of forgiveness. To it, we come with joy. And in that spirit, we sing, I come with joy, hymn number 768. Let us stand as we sing. again <laughs> I need a, a number of hands <laughs> nevertheless I'll use my preacher voice here, here you go. <laughs> on the night that Jesus was betrayed he gathered together his disciples and he took bread and he said this is my body which is broken for you as often as you take this bread and drink this cup, you remember my death until I come. And also, I don't need the microphone, I don't need to yell in it, do I? <laughs> and also, the cup. Say, this cup is the covenant in my blood. The blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you eat and drink, you remember my death till I come.
take the uh, cellophane off the top. Ah. Take the little wafer. Take heat. This is my bottle. Take the second level, second layer, I should say. This is my blood poured out for you. The disciples sang a hymn, we also sing a hymn, Blessed be the God, let us stand and sing. Jesus Christ be with you all now.